there was a banjo at the house that Andy and I lived at. <laughs> and I kind of like wanted to play bluegrass music. And we're from Pittsburgh. So like being up here, you know, you don't, you, you know, there's not many banjo players. Yeah. So eventually somebody has to suck it up. <laughs> yeah, one day Joe showed up with the banjo. We were, uh, these two were doing a singer songwriter folk duo type of thing. And I started playing a little bit of mandolin. And then Joe showed up with the banjo, and then we were basically a string band after that, <laughs> playing bluegrass. You know? Just because we're holding bluegrass instruments, it doesn't sound like jazz, but it's definitely jazz oriented. Like, free, like, I don't know, I get a kick out of free jazz. So, like, my goal of bluegrass music is a free grass music you know if we do it correctly it should just sound it shouldn't sound like individual instruments it should sound like one sonic sound hitting you collectively It's still new to us. You know, we're like, yeah, like rock and rollers, like indie guys. We like to weird people out and we like to get weird ourselves. For a lot of just like popular music, I think people are ready to see people hold instruments again. So I think we're gonna see a lot of resurgence in Americana music in the next couple of years. Just, you know, cause like j uh, the jazz scene and that kind of stuff, as well as like, you know, just folk country is still, you know, it's all it's all happening at the same time. Let trees look in unexpectedly. Face my blind, it comes and slaps me on my knees. Saying this my stop son, but you won't be traveling alone. Oh, my life looks so different from my 